Your character's stupid, broken, lame, etc. This is a phrase many Smash players will hear eventually, especially those who see any sort of success. It sucks to have your skill discredited like this, especially when you put a lot of work into the game. It might make you start questioning your skill and thinking you're actually carried. Personally, being criticized for my character is a true hardship for me, because people really don't realize just how much blood, sweat, and technical precision it takes to narrow of shield with Yoshi. If the fate of the world was on the line and I had to hit one of these to save the planet, I could only promise a 50 50 chance. Okay, in all seriousness, having played that dinosaur throughout the entirety of Smash 4 and Ultimate, I've heard pretty much every criticism in the book, but it rarely, if ever, bothers me nowadays. Hopefully, the tips in this video can help if you struggle with this issue. So, let's get started. Number 1. Realize that every character gets hate. Every time I open up Twitter, I find a barrage of complaints about pretty much every character in the game. That and wholesome Animal Crossing posts, which I'm definitely a fan of right now. Keep them coming. Anyway, Palutena and Game & Watch are prime targets for hate. Bowser is very widely criticized for whatever reason, and if you've been playing the game for long enough, you may remember when Wolf, Inkling, Olimar, and Lucina were all getting trashed on for quite some time. People just like to complain about characters. Why? Maybe it's a way to blow off steam or make funny jokes, of which I've definitely seen my good share. Making jokes is fine, and people often aren't being 100% serious when they complain about characters. But if you ever hear a genuine snide remark or read a tweet about how your character in particular is X, Y, or Z, just realize that, for better or worse, it's Smash culture to do that to everyone's character choice and now it's your turn. This way, you'll find out just how insignificant many of these complaints are. But what if they're right? What if my character does get damaged way too easily? What if my neutral is cookie cutter? What if I couldn't win if I didn't cheese people? These are all concerns I've dealt with in the past that have made me feel pretty unsure of how good I actually was. But it wasn't until I slowly came to this next realization that I eventually stopped questioning my skill over time. Not that I'm perfect or I think my character doesn't assist me in any way, but at least I'm content with my character choice and playstyle. Number two, Acknowledge that every player is carried to some degree. Want to know who the most carried players are in this game? Top players. Seriously, have you watched them? MKLeo consistently cheeses people early with Arsene. Nairo makes it very difficult to push a freaking button against his hyper-aggressive Neri Palutena to buzz walls people out, never giving them a chance to get in with his zoners. Samsora takes people from 0 to 60 just like that, the list goes on. There is nobody in the world who abuses the strengths of their characters as well as these guys. For the record, I don't actually think top players are carried please don't kill me. So why is it that no one questions the skill of these players, but if some local Peach player gets a 60% combo, all of a sudden they're carried? Well, I think there could be several reasons, but the main one is probably this. The Peach is considered a bad player who wouldn't get that damage if he used a worse character. Okay, we'll assume this is true. Maybe the Peach, or anyone else who plays a top tier for that matter, does get damage a little easier than if they were to use someone else. First, it's important to realize that most people who point fingers at those who do this are just as guilty. Almost every character has some sort of gimmick. Pikachu's hard to hit, Sonic's frustrating to play against, Ivysaur kills early and has high damage output, Ganondorf is overpowered in every sense of the word, etc. Sure, one could make the argument, but my gimmick isn't as good as Peach's. But that's really just a subjective opinion with no real weight. The only objective data you can measure to decide who's a better player is tournament results, and that's what every ranking system uses. So somebody could say X player doesn't deserve to be ranked as highly as they are because they're carried or whatever, but the bottom line is that X player had better results than all the people below him, and that's all you can really track without resorting to opinions which can't be proven right or wrong, and thus don't matter if you really think about it. So if you find yourself doing well and people start to diss you, just focus on and enjoy the fact that you did do well. That's all that mattered, and it's not like the TO is going to dock your PR points because you used a broken character. Also, Smash is very much a mental game. If someone's the better player, it very rarely makes a difference if there's a no-skill player who only abuses gimmicks because they'll often have enough bad habits for the good player to abuse, usually resulting in a win. Little details like matchup ratios only matter at higher levels, meaning not locals or against your best friend. So if you're doing well with a good character, chances are you have at least some fundamentals. Now there will be times when people lose not because they got outplayed, but because the game just didn't work at the time as you can see here. But these clips are very much part of the vocal minority. You rarely see Twitter clips of uneventful instances where people get outplayed, because they're just not interesting, even though that's what happens 99% of the time. Number 3. Everyone shares the same character select screen. Despite what many Captain Falcon mains will lead you to believe no one has to stick with their character choice. Everybody's free to use a lower mid-tier, it's a perfectly fine decision, but with that choice there will inevitably be consequences and they're in no way forced to use them. Anyone can easily pick someone good like Palu, Pikachu, Joker, Snake, Lucina, Wario, Pokemon Trainer, ZSS, Peach, Mario, Roy, etc, which will give them a lot more potential to get far in the game. That's a lot of top tier options covering a wide variety of playstyles. If they don't outright main these characters, they could at least pick up one as a secondary. But nobody was 
was like assigned to a character at birth or anything. So if you win neutral by nairing with Palutena, don't feel bad at all. You're just exploiting your character the same way your opponent is probably trying to exploit theirs. The fact that your opponent doesn't have a move as good as yours is not your problem. Also, if you get hit with the your character is so much easier than mine, challenge them to a ditto. Chances are they'll have no idea what they're doing if they actually accept it. Now the argument that we all share the same CSS is often refuted with a good amount of excuses that do have some weight to them. But X character is the only character that's fun to me slash fits my playstyle. It takes a long time to learn a new character, but Raptor Boost just should not do that. These excuses can be hard to argue against, so my suggestion would be to just agree and then carry on with your life. It's not like the excuses matter or you have any control over them. And if someone truly wants to do well, they'll find a way to learn a different character or suck it up. If you or someone you know uses these excuses, my suggestion would be for that person to take a step back, realize that everyone has different goals with the game, and then reassess theirs. Do they mainly want to be PGR? Great, then they should maybe consider picking up a different character, even if they're out of their comfort zone, to provide a higher chance of reaching that goal. There are many ways to do this, such as starting with a secondary and transitioning them into your main. Heck, some people were still able to make it on PGR with unconventional character choices, so they could just focus more on fundamentals if they really believed in their fighter. Do they want to be the best player of their character regardless of how good they are? They can go for it, nobody's stopping them. But it's important to know that they may be setting themselves up for a bit of a challenge. They could have bad matchups, and they might need to learn the game on hard mode. But all in all, no one's better than anyone else for their character choice. Everyone has their own unique goals and ambitions with Smash, and they all have different ways of reaching those goals. Sure, maybe the Ganon who lost to the Palu player could argue that he was still the smarter player, and only lost because of the matchup. But choosing Palutena was already a very smart decision to begin with, at least when it comes to winning, so that, in a way, balances it out. But what if your character genuinely needs fixes or buffs? Personally, I think it's fine to speak out about these issues, as long as you're not obnoxious about it. Just know that when people complain about their character not working, there's nothing you can do about it besides moving on and improving. All you did was choose a character that you, and they, had every right to use. Number 4. Don't take it personally. Always remember that when people give you character hate, it's, well, on your character, not you as a competitor. Maybe try thinking of them as getting mad at the game developers, not you. Regardless of how valid their claims are on why your character's X or Y, all you did was pick them. As Nairo said when Gluttony beat him in a heartbreaking fashion, give Wario hate, not the player. If you find yourself getting criticized for your playstyle, that can be annoying, but I've found that most people do deep down respect those who might be a little less flashy than others. Plus, and I can't stress this enough, there's always at least some intelligent play involved when one player beats another with a good character. My region has plenty of Palutinas and Nesses, but only one of them makes it to Grand Finals every week. Back on the topic of not taking things personally, people often say things they don't mean when they lose as well. After I beat someone is when I'd say I get most of my character hate, but afterwards they'll have cooled down and will usually take responsibility for their loss. If someone still complains about your character long after losing and never acknowledges that they might be the issue, chances are they're not amazing at the game with that mentality, and they probably won't make it very far until they get their act together. Don't let this scrub mentality drag you down. How many times have you seen MK Leo complain about a character? Dark Wizzy talks super highly about Mario, a character with very clear weaknesses and bad matchups. In the rare instances that you do get hate as a competitor for using a certain character, and your skill isn't even slightly acknowledged, just don't engage with those people. They're just trying to bring you down, likely due to having problems with their own skill or other aspects of their life. It can also help to use that hate as fuel for getting even better. Number 5. See it as a good thing. Hey, if you're getting more character hate now than ever, chances are you're doing pretty well. Have you seen those Salty Ice Climbers compilations on YouTube? Those are always against the good Ices players, and you'll never see people getting mad against the scrubby ones. So if people start giving you crap for playing certain characters, that's a sign that you made it. As unfortunate as it is, anyone who becomes successful will always get backlash in return, including MKLeo, the most humble number one player the Smash community could have ever asked for. It makes perfect sense why Meister went off on Twitter about people attacking him a while ago. He went straight from being unranked to PGR number 6 in what felt like an instant. I'm sure his DMs were vicious, so take that hate as a sign that you're improving and don't let it distract you from your goals. If you still want to become the new best young Ola Ivy Palusonic suit Samus, never give up. Try not to engage with the haters if you can, as it's typically a bad look. But if it gets really bad and you're forced to, I recommend embracing the hate. Let's say you constantly spam up Smash with Game & Watch to get a kill and people give you crap for it. You can make a joke about how you've been grinding kill confirms and how much skill it takes to get a kill with the character. Meister has been really good at that stuff. But don't whine back, that's a little immature and not good if you're looking for a sponsor or anything. And that's it. Hope you guys like this video being a little different. Also, my upload schedule is pretty much non-existent right now, so maybe this was a pleasant surprise, I guess? I sort of had to deal with some personal things in life, but it's all better now. I won't make any
any promises for my upload schedule at the moment, especially since I'm about to go back to school, but I'll do my best to ensure every upload is worth your time. Also, nothing over two weeks. All right, see you later.